Welcome to Shakespeare FC, The Sonnets, a five-minute journey into the iambic abominations on life, love, death, and desire, with a smattering of nature and naughtiness from the mind of our literary epicure from Warwickshire, or, as you become more familiar, Uncle Will. I'm your host, Kari Marshall. In his sonnets, Uncle Will wrote from a very personal place about the human condition, all in just 14 lines. But in that meager space, we can find an absolute wealth of human experience that you just might identify with. So, let's you and I go on a little journey. Today, Uncle Will is hungry and full and hungry again. So, appetites are on the menu, as William picked up his plume to pen his 75th sonnet. This is yet another of the fair youth epistles where Uncle Will expresses the constant state of tension between glorying in a treasure and fearing its loss. In the first quatrain, William lays bare his feelings about the youth, saying that his need for the young man's attention is as essential for his survival as food is to life, or even as the earth needs the rain. But Uncle Will confesses that peace is eluding him, in much the same way as a wealthy miser hoards and covets his money, but is constantly worried he will lose it. So are you to my thoughts as food to life, or as sweet season showers to the ground, and for the peace of you I hold such strife as twixt a miser and his wealth is found. In the second quatrain, he continues with his miser metaphor, delving deeper by saying that as this hoarder, Uncle Will is constantly moving between being able to enjoy his treasure, the young man's affections, and worry that someone is going to come along and steal it away from him. He is caught in two minds, on the one hand feeling that loving the youth alone and in private is best, and then wishing that the whole world could see William's pleasure in the young man's attention. Now proud as an enjoyer, and anon, doubting the filching age will steal his treasure, now counting best to be with you alone, then bettered that the world may see my pleasure. In the third quatrain, William moves back to the dinner table and confesses that there are times when he becomes too full from feasting on the young man's looks and company, but then finds himself immediately starved again for the sight of the fair youth, saying that in the possession of or in the pursuit of the young man's affections, William finds no pleasure, bemoaning the fact that it is the young man who seems to be the only source of happiness for Uncle Will. Sometime, all full with feasting on your sight, and by and by clean starved for a look, possessing or pursuing no delight, save what is had or must from you be took. In the final couplet, our wistful William sums up his predicament as being in a constant state of moving between two extremes of wanting and having, longing and gorging, and so that happiness shall always elude him. Thus do I pine and surfeit day by day, or gluttoning on all, or all away. I can, and have, attested to the relative accuracy of this sonnet when it comes to love, either of food, people, or imbibation, that feeling of starvation and emptiness when the object of your desire is absent, or, worse, in the room and not giving you their attention, but that's explored more specifically in other sonnets. But what I have learned, ish, that Uncle Will should have come to realize at this point in his life is that sometimes the having is not so good as the wanting. Well, alas and alack, my friends, that is all we have time for. Join us again next time for another hopefully informative journey into the mind of Uncle William. I'm Kari Marshall. Farewell until next time. Shakespeare FC is a production of WGTE Public Media and is sponsored in part by a generous donation from the Cowie Family Fund. All previous episodes are available at wgte.org sfc or wherever you get your podcasts.